it was only very recently that I realized that Jesus was not the object of his own preaching. Jesus did not go around Galilee preaching that he was God. He himself was not the center of life. What Jesus preached was the kingdom of God. He preached the wider reality within which he understood everything, including God. The Jesuit theologian John Sabrino insists that Jesus is one of those who believe that it is possible to overcome the suffering of history. He belongs to the current of those who hope in history, in the midst of oppression, who again and again formulate a utopia and believe that justice is possible. Jesus kept insisting that the kingdom was at hand, although he never actually defined it. The most interesting feature of this kingdom is that it is constantly opposed by other forces. Some may say that we live in a world that is actually structured to prevent the kingdom of God from becoming a reality. Thus, in order to understand the kingdom of God, one has to understand what prevents it. What is at stake in all of this is hope as a conviction that there is something good in reality, that somehow we can transform that reality. In other words, if we do not experience the forces that try to prevent the kingdom, then we have not done anything significant to bring about the kingdom of God. What do I mean by this? Doesn't it seem that every time we hear about something good or about someone who has done a good deed, There is some bad news associated with it. We laud someone as a hero. Soon enough, there is a report that the person has done something not so great. Those who are held up are torn down just as fast. Doesn't it seem that there is so much good going on in charity organizations or the church, and then there is always news of a scandal? Those who work to help bring about the kingdom of God will always experience forces that oppose it. So what did Jesus have in mind when he preached the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God means that God acts in this world and that these acts lead to a transformation of the world. And this does not happen simply individually, but more importantly, it happens communally. Our hope is hope as a people, as a community, and not just as individuals. It is also a reality that emerges as good news, even when faced with opposition. But the kingdom of God is not only good news. It is good news against. It is good news against injustice, against poverty, against violence, against persecution, against dehumanization. Jesus saw as his mission that which Isaiah foretold, that he was to bring good news to the poor, Good news is offered to all, but especially to the poor, because the poor are those who are most in need of this good news. And this is what the poor need to hear most, that justice is more than simply a possibility, that poverty is an evil that must be eradicated, that violence has no place in the world, that persecution will come to an end, that the God who created them in his own image and likeness will not tolerate dehumanization. One of the most famous quotes attributed to Gustavo Gutierrez, the famous Latin American theologian, is this. Pobres son los que mueren antes de su tiempo. The poor are those who die before their time. This is because of poverty, because of violence, because they do not live as human beings should. And if the poor are those who die before their time, then the heart of the message that is the kingdom of God has to be the possibility of life. And because Jesus brought good news to the poor, he had taken a stance. He chose one side over another. And therefore, he had to be put to death. Today's gospel gives us the trial of Jesus by the very people he sided against. Their opposition to him and to his message was the same opposition to the kingdom of God. Because Jesus' death was not a mistake. It was the consequence of his life. Jesus was killed because he preached the reality of the kingdom of God and because his actions were aimed toward the fulfillment of that same kingdom. Jesus became a threat when he got in the way of forces that be. Because he worked for justice, 
because he preached hope, because he opposed violence. Ironic, isn't it? There's a humanitarian crisis gathering at our doorstep. This morning, they closed the border both ways. Some of you are involved with trying to help out these refugees and asylum seekers. Some of you are trying to figure out what is actually going on at the border and what the different sides to the story are. Some of you probably have no clue what I'm talking about. Either way, we are being offered a way to help build up the kingdom of God through advocating for the same justice and providing the same hope that Jesus did. Because there are people in real need, not halfway around the world, but 20 miles away. People are dying. Conditions are deplorable. They are asking for help. They are beseeching. They are imploring. They are pleading with us for help. And we have sent soldiers to meet them. I think we need to take a stance as Jesus did. To bring good news to these, God's poor. The same good news against, against injustice, against poverty, against violence, against dehumanization. And whatever you decide to do, or however you decide to do it, whether through our own refugee support company that some of the members of our congregation have formed, or through Catholic charities, or through prayer, or through simply keeping yourself informed, whatever and however you decide to do it, please take a stance. Because this is the way to get to the very heart of the message, that the kingdom of God is about the possibility of life, of allowing God to act in this world and to transform it, and don't get discouraged because those who work to help bring about the kingdom of God will always experience forces that oppose it. The prophecy of Daniel assures us that the Son of Man will come back and he will receive dominion and glory and kingship, that all peoples and all nations will serve him, that his dominion will be everlasting. We are left with a promise that even though the kingdom of God is opposed in the here and now, and even though the opposing forces may seem to win more than just occasionally, in the end, the kingdom of God will prevail, because it has to. In the end, justice and peace and forgiveness and love will triumph, because that's how it has to be, because that's the good news. And that's why we celebrate and wait in hope for the return of Christ the King.